I want to build a space shot, a rocket that goes over 100 kilometers and then comes back. I don't currently have the skill set to do something like that, so we need to build a bunch of rockets in between now and whenever I do that space shot that sort of get me to that place. In this field of high power rocketry, there are three tiers of certifications that you can get, level one, level two, and level three. Each one progressively going up until three lets you buy more powerful motors and fly larger rockets. In 2017, I completed my level one certification. In 2019, I completed my level two certification. And this spring, I'll be doing my level three certification. I'm still building the rocket for this and am calling it Lumineer because the goal is to light the way for me to get into more high powered rocketry. The vehicle is 98 millimeters in diameter, about 2.8 meters long. And for the certification flight, we're flying it up to about 10 kilometers with a max speed of Mach 1.7. We'll start by taking a look at the open rocket simulation here and then move over to the CAD file, which is much more detailed. Open rocket is great and a free application that lets you simulate flights for model rocketry. And it's pretty accurate if you input the values correctly. What you're looking at here is the vehicle on its side. We have four fins around the base. This gray section is the motor. This blue dot right here is the center of mass of the vehicle at liftoff, and this red dot is the center of pressure. There are two main sections of tube. The first is a 60 inch, 98 millimeter fiberglass tube that you can see on the bottom right here. Then joined by a coupler is a 30 inch section of the same type of tube, which functions more as the avionics or payload section. The nose cone is a 5.5 to one Von Karman shape with an aluminum tipped nose on top. As previously shown, this is the motor section. Uh, this is all filled with ammonium perchlorate, not now, but like right before the launch, it will be filled with ammonium perchlorate. Uh, and this is going to fly an N1560 motor, which burns for roughly 10 seconds. The fins were originally designed to be these custom aluminum fins, very pretty and tri symmetry. We would have three fins around the edge of the casing. We can't do rather the edge of the airframe. We cannot do through the wall fins to strengthen them because literally on the other side of the airframe is propellant. We have no room to go into the vehicle. The problem with these fins is that in order to properly certify the flight, you cannot use commercially available fin cans. So I'll be making my own fins out of G10 and then doing a tip to tip fiberglass layup to reinforce them. Looking at some of the flight simulations here, we can real quick just plot it out. This simulation shows our vertical acceleration, velocity, and altitude. This assumes very slow wind and a completely vertical launch. So in all likelihood, we'll have some angle to point down range or point the rocket where we want it to go. And we probably won't get exactly to 10 kilometers here. More than likely, we'll get to 9,500 or somewhere around there. But I don't know, place your bets in the comments. We'll see if we can get to 10. So there's a lot of detail here. And if you're confused about stuff, no worries. Google is your friend, but I will also be doing more videos on the build. Uh, for this vehicle. It's unclear uh, given the schedule and like when we're trying to launch if I'll be able to publish a lot of those videos before we launch, but we'll see. Let's take a look at the model. I've got the rocket right here next to a person of unknown height that I just found on GrabCAD somewhere. We also have Scout E in the frame and Sprint. Down at the base of the vehicle, we have the fins right here. Very simple model, didn't want to make it too complex. I also modeled an incredibly incorrect finisil grain for the motor, uh, even though that's not how it's going to work. It just looks really cool. I've got the case modeled right here, and you can see where the forward attachment is on the airframe. This section right here is the forward mount retainer, and it gets epoxied into the internal part of the airframe. The load does not actually travel through this section. The load travels through a lip on the bottom of the vehicle right here, and it travels directly up just axially on the airframe. This right here is a retainer so that the motor doesn't come out. Shortly above it is a small camera section which houses two run cam split 4Ks. For both of these, I also modeled the field of view of the camera. We know that it has about a 140 degree field of view and that translates into a roughly 16 by nine field of view that we can see for the vehicle. So that's just kind of an interesting thing to see. I'm going to try to do two ambitious things here. The first is live stream the launch itself from the middle of the desert. I think I can do it. I am not totally sure. Just keep your fingers crossed and send me good internet connection thoughts. That also requires that things go smoothly on launch day and that literally never happens. I'm also going to try and get live downlink from the vehicle. The flight is about five minutes long and I would love to see the vehicle's perspective in real time if we can. So not modeled here is a video transmitter on 2.4 gigahertz. We have a ground station and just about enough range to be, I don't know, 13, 15 kilometers away and get some decent analog video. Right here, you can see the coupler section between the uh, forward and aft 
airframe sections. Moving up a little bit further is the antenna mount, which houses three different types of antennas. The first is a very crudely modeled GPS antenna. If I turn the airframe off, it makes things a little easier to see. This is the GPS antenna in red. We have the telemetry antenna, which is an XB Pro S3 that connects to AVA on, the, uh, on 915 megahertz. And then uh, we also have a board from USC's Rocket Propulsion Lab. I'm working with USC on like several different things, and one of them is testing their altitude measurement system. We won't get too into the details, but essentially USC will station several people across the ground near the launch site, and then we will be able to triangulate the radio ping uh, between this transponder on the rocket and a couple of ground stations. They built this to verify their space shot attempts and this will be the first flight of it on a rocket. It operates at around 400 megahertz and that's that. Coming up here is the avionics section and this has a lot going on so we'll start somewhere familiar. AVA will have control over a few things on the flight but most importantly it will have control over the charge that fires the drogue chute at Apogee and the charge that releases the main parachute at about five to 700 meters. AVA will also broadcast telemetry to the ground and will have control over the camera power bus. This is important because all cameras together on the vehicle draw a total of 1.8 amps of current, and we don't wanna be draining that on the pad if we're waiting for two or three hours to launch. Similarly, we don't wanna be draining that from the rocket if we're on the ground broadcasting our location while we're trying to find the rocket. You might have noticed here, there's a big section below AVA. This is a reaction wheel to control the roll axis. You can see there's a really beefy motor at the bottom. I've modeled a small ESC in between and we have a little, <laughs> it almost looks like a jail cell to contain the reaction wheel here. And here is where I need to ask the internet for help. This wheel is a chunker. He absolutely thick. It's 80 millimeters in diameter and about 50 millimeters tall. The design is specced out to be about 1.5 kilograms in weight because it is made of stainless steel. I do not have the capability to machine stainless steel, and I think if I generated the G-code to do that on my machine, the machine would literally die. If you have the capability to machine a stainless steel part of this size in, say, two weeks, please reach out below. This part is not flight critical, which means I do not need to fly the rocket with it on board. If something goes wrong in the preparation process or if the control software still feels too sketchy to me, we can just turn it on passive or leave it off the rocket altogether. That said, these motors are very expensive and every time I burn one, I wanna learn as many new things as possible. So we're gonna try for it. Moving over to the right on the avionics bay is a telemetrum and camera mount. The telemetrum is what's called a dual deploy computer and it is made by a company called Altus Metrum. You'll notice there's a GPS antenna on the top here so that we can get our location data. There's also a small wire antenna here which broadcasts telemetry over 400 megahertz. And there are several pyro channels that I can hook up to charges to deploy main or drogue parachutes. The important part to note here is that AVA and the telemetrum are on entirely different power buses. They are power isolated and they can work just fully independent of each other. Should something go wrong, should I miss a step in a checklist, should a computer just just die on ascent. We have two computers, both of which can independently control the most important events of flight, which are not launch, but drogue and main parachute deployment. Below that is another Runcam Split 4K, and we can take a look at it in the model here. This camera looks out the side of the vehicle over to the horizon. We can see the field of view right here. Coming over to the final side of the avionics section is the battery mount and a fourth camera. There's a part that's not visible in the CAD here. I don't actually know why, but we can just take a look at the real part. This is a, an aluminum forward bulkhead which mounts the piston ejection system that we'll talk about in a bit. The bulkhead has a hole in it for the camera to look through so that we can get some nice views of the chute deployment events. On top of that is a pusher plate, which is actually the bottom of a cup that helps scoop all of the parachutes and nose cone off of the vehicle for drogue deployment. And then in the CAD here, if I get rid of the avionics sleds, you can see what is in the center. This is a piston that will actually do the deploying of the drogue chute. And the way that this works is that in the very bottom of the piston, it's just a pneumatic piston, we stick two independent igniters, one connected to each computer. With an incredibly small amount of black powder, we're able to pressurize the volume within this piston really, really high, really, really fast. That piston is going to do a great job of pushing the nose cone off of the vehicle and getting all of the chute material, bags, and everything else out. I don't have it modeled in the CAD here, but the main deployment mechanism is something called a tender descender, and this is what it looks like. 
Basically, you have two quick links, one on either side, and then when you fire a small black powder charge inside of this, it pulls out these two rods. See if I can do it manually. It's quite sturdy. One of, if not both, the quick links will come off and then allow a main line to separate, which can inflate our main parachute. In keeping with the dual redundancy thing, I'll be flying two tender descenders, one connected to each independent computer, and that way only one of them needs to fire to release the main parachute. Finally, up top, we have the nose cone. I have not modeled the parachutes in this CAD file, but by volume, they fit pretty nicely. And for the most part, that's a pretty good overview of the vehicle flying this spring. If you want to stay posted on whether or not this thing will be live streamed or maybe when it will be live streamed, um, you can follow me on Twitter. I post stuff all the time about this build. There's also a bunch of social channels that I'll try to keep posted with general dates and times. I'm being intentionally vague about the launch time and date and location because please do not show up. Um, this is going to be a very stressful day and I'm asking you kindly, if you know where it is, don't come unless you're invited. Um, there's a lot to get done. There's a pandemic and I know that people just want to see rockets. You will get better views on the live stream or the video that comes afterward. In the next few weeks, I'll hopefully have some time to put together several videos on constructing the vehicle itself. It shouldn't be too hard. Obviously things between CAD and real life don't always match. So we might have some fun stuff to take care of there. But otherwise I'm looking forward to doing some more high power builds and hopefully getting certified for level three rocketry. Thanks a bunch for watching. My name is Joe Barnard. May your skies be blue and your winds be low.